Welcome back. In example two, we're asked to determine, looking at a set of data, whether the x-coordinates and the y-coordinates show direct variation, inverse variation, or neither. To recap, if we have direct variation, then the ratio of the input and the output is the same. So the, the ratio of x over y or y over x, uh, it doesn't matter which ratio you look at, they have to be constant. Now up here, I specifically wrote y over x, but you'll notice that if I reciprocate this, meaning if I take the reciprocal of this side, I have to take the reciprocal of this side as well. So if we do x over y instead, this side would turn into 1 over a. Well, if a is a constant, imagine a to be 3, and we take the reciprocal of it, 1 third would be a constant still. So it doesn't matter if we're testing for direct variation whether we do x over y computations or y over x. It's immaterial. I, in this example, I specifically wanted to do the opposite of what I wrote above to make sure the point was really driven home. For inverse variations, we know that the x and y products are constant. And products are always easier to compute, so I do that first, always, uh, regardless of what type of problem it is here. So if we multiply these two x coordinates, 2 times negative 12 yields negative 24, 4 times negative 6 is negative 24, 6 times negative 4 is negative 24 still and then 8 times negative 3 is negative 24 as well. Now, be careful, because a common mistake here is that students will often just do the first two or maybe the first three computations and declare that they have found inverse variation because the products are constant. You want to make sure that you do that computation for all the data points that are given to you, and you'll see why in the very next example. So here, since these products are the same, the products are all negative 24, that indicates to us or implies that we have inverse variation. Or we can say that x and y vary inversely. For this set of data, if we do the same thing, we start by multiplying the x and y uh, coordinates. So 1 times 2 will give us 2. 2 times 4 is 8. Now right off the bat, we can say quite certainly that the products will not be the same. So if you're trying to rule something out, you can do that the moment you hit uh, incongruency, meaning if these two values are not the same, you don't have to find these last two. I did it just for the sake of completeness because I, I don't want to memorize under which circumstances I should take it all the way to the end versus which not. So here, it's safer just to do it for all. But for if they're not constant, that's the only time you can truncate your work and say, okay, I don't have to do these two because these two already don't match. But 3 times 8 is 24, 4 times 16 is 64. So there's no way that these constants are all the same. Therefore, we say that we do not have inverse variation. For direct variation, we have to look at the ratios. So if we were to look at the ratio of x to y, 1 divided by 2 is obviously 1 half. 2 divided by 4 is 1 half as well. The... Uh, Perhaps the, the, the student who might potentially get this question wrong might be inclined to say, hey, these two are the same, so I probably have direct variation. But if you look at the very next ratio, 3 divided by 8 is not 1 half. That's where the train goes off the tracks. And similarly, 4 over 16 is not 1 half either. It's 1 fourth. All of these constants have to be the same. If the ratios are not identical, then we do not have direct variation. So since the products were not constant, we don't have inverse. Since the ratios are not constant, we don't have direct. Therefore, these are neither direct variation nor showing inverse variation. And just to drive the point home, had we found y over x, we'd run into the same issue. 2 divided by 1 is 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2, which is fine. These two are the same, but 8 divided by 3 is not 2. And 16 divided by 4 is 4, which is certainly not 2. Hopefully that helps. We'll see you in the next video.